Professionals in law, medicine, finance, and other fields participate in ongoing education to carry out the crucial responsibilities entrusted to them. Imagine if they were also responsible to sustain the health ministry of the Catholic Church. How does someone prepare for such an awesome responsibility? Formation helps prepare sponsors for this vital role by providing an understanding of canon law and the theological and moral teachings of the church. Formation also offers rich opportunities for spiritual growth and development to help people carry out their call to serve the church and the community. Sponsor formation experience was a, was a godsend. The most important thing formation did for me is help erase the self-doubts of why me for sponsor. There's so many other uh, more qualified people, why me? And it helps replace that question with, uh, I hear you calling my name and saying yes uh, to that. When you talk about formation, you are taking the clay of a person's life and trying to mold it into something that is beautiful and functional and uh, helpful to the church. We have to be really engaged with our lay partners. Other than women religious, men and women who feel called to the ministry, who see something here that strikes their hearts, uh, gives them energy, uh, gives them focus, uh, that they really and truly appreciate the opportunity to serve. I think it would be helpful in the formation of sponsors or sponsor candidates uh, to understand something about how the church thinks today. And uh, I, I think we want people to enter in with the idea that they have a fiduciary responsibility, uh, that this is going to be a ministry, uh, and ministries can be variously defined. What are going to be the expectations in terms of what they bring to the table? A key part of formation involves prayer, reflection, and discussion. Spiritual formation doesn't happen all at once. It takes place over time. One never finishes formation, for one is never fully formed. Ongoing formation is very, very important. Uh, just like our faith journey, it, it doesn't end. You either move forward or you slip back. Consistent across all those programs is an extended opportunity for conversation, reflection, prayer, discernment around key aspects of the sponsorship ministry. That would include things like understanding and experiencing and naming for oneself one's call. It would include what is the church's responsibility to serve ministry. What, what are the fundamental social teachings and principles that inform the works that we do? What is it um, to talk about discernment and ethical decision making? The notion of creating a community where people can share honestly where they are and, and reflect uh, what their faith is and how they live it out, that that's a critical part of formation. It's also a critical part of a person coming to the place where they understand their own call and they're able to commit. And we can't do that by ourselves. We have to do that in a community with others. So you need to set aside time to really be exposed uh, to that kind of education and learning and then to talk about it with others that are involved in that kind of work so you can learn from it. And then have time to reflect and pray uh, so it's not just education, it's really a formation experience that's blended with the education. Recently in a formation program, we took the people that were in the program to the mother house of the sisters and had them go to the dining room, be with them spread out and doing it. And the, the value of that was more than we could have ever anticipated because they heard the deep stories of the sisters. The sisters also heard the deep stories of the laypersons and we're thrilled. And I think that's part of our letting go to recognize that God is calling other people. Through formation, sponsors take on their role individually and as a group using their unique gifts or charisms. Laity often bring a, a, a really breadth of vision uh, to the work. Um, Sometimes we have a dean of a school of nursing who brings a certain perspective. Uh, we have a, a member who has done uh, planning across uh, healthcare, not just Catholic healthcare. 
uh, in the clinical arena, physicians uh, bring their, their clinical expertise. A physician will take it right down to what does this mean at the bedside. From their own business background or management background or whatever, they bring a, a real insight. Sponsorship boards will have to have different kinds of people with different kinds of expertise because each one of them is going to have to be a sentinel looking out across the community for things that they can do to help that community uh, and, and assist the internal workings of the ministry uh, better meet its obligations and uh, its dreams uh, for, for better care and, and those kinds of things. If we're going to be recruiting sponsors or sponsor candidates, uh, we have to let them know that we value their language. They may be intimidated that they don't know, um, in a formal sense, ethics or theology, but they'll have formation opportunities to learn that um, they know more than they think and that their experience is absolutely invaluable. Although the structure and components of individual formation programs can vary, they share the same foundation and purpose. And it begins with the dignity of the human person. Uh, treating each person as a whole, mind, body, and soul. How important our sense of community and the common good is. Um, our care and our special attention to the poor and the vulnerable. Um, our commitment to social justice. Our commitment to the Catholic Church and the fact that we are in communion with all other workers within the Catholic Church and the hierarchy. The gospel teachings, the ethical and religious directives, the social teachings of the Church the major encyclicals that involve um, health care, um, the unions, uh, the labor movement, ritual, whether it's the liturgy or prayer services or what have you. You can go to the governance board and get governance skills, but who's going to help you learn about fundamental option for the poor? Who's going to help you learn about common good and how that is carried out in the organization? You don't learn these things overnight and more often than not, there's seeds that are planted with you to cause you to think more deeply about how it is you're going to sponsor your ministries. That's what we as board members are expected uh, to do, to become students uh, of, the, of the ministry. Are we really contributing? to the needs of this community at this time. How is it that we can respond in a different way, perhaps in a better way? How is it that we can be prophetic in this community and sometimes challenge structures that are in place? How is it that we challenge management, leadership in the organization to be aligned differently? How is it that the resources that are given to us are used appropriately to further the ministry rather than to further the benefit of any individual in the ministry? Those are not easy questions, but sponsors have a responsibility to continue asking them to ensure that they are creating a future of hope for all those who partner with them in this ministry. Creating a future of hope is a tall order. Responding to new market conditions and community needs calls for partnerships with a wide variety of groups. In the midst of these changes, sponsors need to preserve the values and principles of Catholic identity. We have hundreds of thousands of non-Catholic patients, tens of thousands of non-Catholic employees, tens of thousands of non-Catholic suppliers, and they're all part of our community. We have to be constantly careful about how we communicate who we are, what we represent, and what it should mean for all those individuals. It's very challenging. One of the things that's been um, fun for me is to watch the growth of uh, lay leadership, to watch the commitment of people who all of a sudden are discovering, I'm a leader in Catholic health care. The sponsorship boards are full of people who usually are running their own business. Uh, and, and they're very goal-oriented and driven toward those things. So they want some metrics, they want measurables. Uh, and, and so they're not just getting together to talk kind words and, and to be nice people and to um, talk over the life of the founding saint of whatever organization that you're working for. Uh, they're very much goal-oriented and, and they love what they're doing. And, uh, 
they also learn things that they can bring back to their own life, their own business, and their own family. So those are all wonderful motivations that will make these joyful encounters. Our challenge for the future is finding the young people of today who want to give that kind of commitment to service of others, not because it make, makes a lot of money, not because it's professionally rewarding, but it's because it's the passion of their lives. Mm -hmm.